Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. We're gonna talk today about Lucy Letby's notes and what they reveal. But first, to give some background for people who maybe aren't familiar with this uh, case and this story, uh, in August of 2023, 33-year-old neonatal nurse Lucy Leppy was found guilty of seven counts of murdering babies and seven counts of attempted murder on six more newborns by a Manchester Crown Court jury after a 10-month trial and 22 days of deliberations. Lucy, a Band 5 nurse, was accused of going on a 13-month murder spree between June of 2015 and June of 2016. Leppy worked at the Countess of Chester neonatal unit since 2012. From at least 2014, this was a level 2 unit taking very premature babies. She was first arrested in July 2018 on suspicion of attacking infants in her care. Two years after she worked her last shift at the Countess of Chester Hospital's neonatal unit. So what can we learn from her notes? Um, she has a disordered mind. The jury was shown several notes Leppy had written, which offered a glimpse into her state of mind at the time of the alleged killings. The notes were discovered during police searches of her three-bedroom home in Westbourne Road, Chester. They appear to show someone who is unraveling under intense pressure and suffering tremendous fear and anxiety. But is that really what's going on? So, um... There's different ways to look at this, right? Depending on what angle you're looking at it from or what perspective you're looking at it from, certain things can be interpreted in different ways, um, I guess. So this note here is the uh, infamous green note. This was referred to uh, by the barrister Nick Johnson as a basically a confession note. Um, she's, you can see here at the bottom, it's in all capital letters, it says, I am evil, I did this. Uh, at the top it says, not good enough. Now, um, there's a gentleman named Mycroft on uh, X, aka Twitter. His handle is at Chris J. Clark uh, Esquire. He has typed up, he's transcribed some of this, uh, some of the writing here. And um, so that makes it a little bit easier to read because the writing is very difficult. It's very small and it's like overlapping. Uh, so it's hard to read, but I'll read some of it. It says, not good enough along the top. There are no words. I can't breathe. I can't focus. Overwhelming fear. I panic. I haven't done anything wrong. Now, if you look at next to that in green, it says, I am an awful person. I pay every day for that. Kill myself right now. I'll never have children or never know what what it's like to have a family. Uh, that's over onto the side. She has no hope written there. And it, it's in different colors to show different things were written at different times. Um, it, it then says uh, police investigation, slander, discrimination, victimization, all getting too much, everything taking over my life every day. I feel very alone and scared. What does the future hold? How can I get through it? How did things ever be like I don't deserve to live? So the, a lot of this is kind of like rambling. The slander, discrimination, victimization is obviously um, the the consultants that had complained about her and... Uh, the investigation that was being done into her. So she was told at one point the doctors had to apologize to her. They were made to apologize to her and because she had gone through a grievance process and she was told that she was a victim. And in fact, they the hospital was going to like sponsor her professionally. You know, it was um, anyways. <laughs> but so... That's, I think, what this is alluding to. But then it says here, I uh, hate myself so much for what this has done. 
hate is uh, written real big and she's obviously written over and over and then she's done a big circle around it and she's um, drawing and redrawing and tracing and retracing the lines. Uh, no hope, despair, panic, fear, lost, why me? They went, I did this, I killed them on purpose because I'm not good enough to care for them. I am a horrible, evil person killing me. I don't deserve mom and dad. World is better off without me. I am evil. I did this. So that is Mycroft's decode. Now, that is not everything that is written on the note. And I think that it's safe to say it is his speculation about how this is written in his decode, about what was written first. Um, but anyways, we can just zoom in on that a little bit more. You can find his uh, Twitter or X account and you can look at this in more detail if that's something you're interested in. He says, this is the breakdown of the notes. Um, I have broken down every word except words that were indecipherable. The order in which to read the note is by color. The first would be red, then the text in purple, then the text in green, followed by the text in teal, and then finally in white, which was the circle around the word hate and not good enough at the top and the stuff along the side there. So um, this is the diary that the notes were found in, that that note was found in. I think that, you know, just, just saying, um, not to be weird or whatever, but the diary itself creeps me out because as an adult woman, I can't really... I would, that's not something I would have. It looks like something a child, that looks like a child's diary, like something you might expect like a 12 year old girl to have. So the diary itself is a little strange to me. And we, when we get into my other part of this, there's a lot of things I'm going to bring up about her behavior or things she has said that are or her behavior, weird things that she's done that, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. But this is also, I wanted to include this as well. I found this on Reddit, uh, I know, <laughs> analysis of Leffy case, particular focus on confessional note. I did find it a little bit compelling to read this, just if you're looking at it from the perspective of perhaps she, it, it's not a confession, it's just she was being told that, like, Maybe she killed the babies and her practice wasn't good enough. According to her, that's what she says. I'm not saying that's the truth or whatever. But uh, this this person says, uh, I was very interested to encounter this subreddit, having become increasingly concerned about this trial and conviction until hearing about the verdict on the news. I have not followed the case closely. Initially, when I heard about it, I was... Uh, I think they were trying to say repulsed, uh, as would be the natural reaction, that after some time my natural instinct for inquisition kicked in. Let be as guilty of all these heinous crimes, show me the evidence. As I begin to investigate this case in more depth, I immediately smelled a rat. I really don't think it is particularly difficult to sense this. You need to disengage your emotions and engage your brain, blah, 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 blah. I think this could be a miscarriage of justice. Then it gets into analyzing the note and basically says some of the things that um, Mycroft said, which is that it he doesn't believe that it is a confession note and believes it was more somebody that was um, having self-doubt because, you know, they were being told that they could have uh, harmed babies and you know she's saying that she's maintained her innocence and has said that she's not guilty of the murder of the babies and the attempted murders so she has said that she just wrote that under basically when she was stressed out and trying to uh, figure out her emotions but I think that it could be looked at another way right that green note so as we kind of said, um, there's different ways to look at this stuff from different perspectives, but could her notes be intentionally contradictory? So in that note, she says, I didn't do anything wrong, but she also says, 
I am evil, I did this, I killed them because I wasn't good enough. So she contradicts herself and I wonder if that might not be on purpose, right? Uh, so if guilty, the green note can be read as Lucy essentially confessing her guilt, saying, I am evil, I did this. It could offer a glimpse into the mind of a very sick serial killer. It could also show the chaotic mind of a mentally disturbed individual being confronted by the reality of the horror of their crimes, her ability to dissociate and compartmentalize broken down as she realizes that the walls are closing in. If she's innocent, uh, if Lucy's innocent, the notes could show the mind of a woman who's been targeted, singled out, and victimized for something she didn't do. Leppy herself claimed she wrote the note at a time when she was under investigation and had been told to reread all her competencies and that there may have been something wrong with her practice. So that's how she explains the, the green uh, confession note. But what I wonder is, so we know that these notes were found uh, at the I think this was the third time that police had been to her house or she'd been arrested three different times. And um, so basically she, she would have known that they would have been coming, right? So she let the notes were left there and the diary was left there. And part of me wonders if she may have done that on purpose, right? Is this intentionally contradictory? Did she leave the notes uh, for, just to, to get people talking about them and confused about it? What does it mean? Does it mean this? Does it mean that? And things like that. Now, here is another note. Um, again, we have uh, Mycroft uh, doing a decode of it. Uh, at the top, it says, love was all we needed. Um, two triplets and the, the baby's names are, uh, the baby's names, um, so we don't know the baby's names. They, they are blurred out of the note. Uh, today is your birthday. So the, the, according to Mycroft, uh, who did the decode, he says that the order to read the note would be red and then green. So we'll read the red writing first to triplets, baby O, baby P, baby Q. Today is your birthday, um, but you aren't here and I am so sorry for that. I'm sorry that you couldn't have the chance at life you should have and that pain that your parents must experience every day. We tried our best and it wasn't enough. I don't know if many people will think of you today or any day, but I do and I hope that we always remember because you should be. Then the text in green, love was all we needed. I think that this is a lyric from a song. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but I think, I, I believe I read that that's the case. Um, love is all we needed. I can't do this anymore. But love let us down. My best friend, Catherine de, Ber de Berger, a Tigger, Tiny Boy Smudge, Tiny Boy Whiskey, Love was all we kill myself. Love was all we needed. But love let us down. I can't do it anymore. Love was all we needed. Help. I can't do this anymore. I want someone to help me, but they can't. So what's the point in asking? Hate my life, which is in the corner there. And you can see she's got, a, again, the where she's written help. She's written it over and over and over again. And she's really like, you know, pressed the ink down. And then she's drawn that circle. And then she has whatever these pictures are. I don't know if that's some big explanation point, but it's like a black smudge and then a bigger black smudge above it. Um, I don't know what that's about. But again, it's very weird. Smudge and Tigger are her cats. Um, then there were even there were these notes that were found as well. The notes contained closely written words that filled the pages and included declarations of love for her married 
older doctor boyfriend who has not been identified. He has been given lifelong anonymity because he has quote unquote anxiety. So we don't get to know his name. The doctor who was married that she was essentially seemingly having an affair with. Uh, he claims that they weren't having an affair. She says that they were not, that they were just friends. But if you read their messages and you look at what they were doing, that doesn't seem like the kind of thing you do with your friends. Do you spend the night at your friend's house? Do you let your friends just use your car and take it home? Um, do you send, like, heart emojis to your friends? It just seems a little bit weird. Uh, and inappropriate. So I believe he's her boyfriend. But anyways, uh, next to his name was written, quote, I loved you and my best friend. Also contained in the notes were the words, help me, I can't do this anymore, and how can life be this way? This is another note. Uh, here again, the sprawling writing on it. She says, please help me in this note uh, numerous times. There's a bunch of other things she's written. And then you contrast it with one of the other things she's written, you know, some of her other notes where she's saying everything is manageable, everything is manageable, and she's saying it over and over again. So again, it's like she's asking for help, but everything is manageable. I, I'm evil, I did this, but also I did nothing wrong. You can see how there's this like, these contradictory things that she's saying. Uh, this was, you know, I make what you will of handwriting analysis. I just wanted to present this while we're talking about her notes, right? Because I am not an expert on handwriting uh, in any way. But um, this uh, handwriting uh, experts analysis looked at her writing some of the notes that we just looked at and said that there were disturbances. Uh, she appears to be obsessive, continuous looping uh, in her writing, mood swings uh, with the mixed slants, narrow margins, overlapping lines is invasive, and then the shaded areas where she drew these weird kind of shapes uh, they see that as repressed anger. And then uh, the uh, tension in her writing, thread and angles, left-leaning slant, difficulty fitting into teams. Now, I'm not sure that that's necessarily true. If you talk to her coworker, some of them said that she fit in perfectly well. Um, some of them described her as nice, Lucy, and, and things like that. Her friends called her the innocent one, which is also very creepy. Uh, signs of dishonesty, missing letters, avoiding truth slash haste. Obviously, that would be speculation. Letters as other letters, uh, intending to confuse. That is interesting because, you know, I think that the notes themselves could be a manipulation. Uh, open based B, which is also interesting. Uh, instinctive issues, twists in long lower zone, compulsive, stimulated by erotic, uh, variable self-esteem, changing middle zone height, temper slashed eye dots, evasive, curled and start, dishonesty and cunning. Uh, the angle is cold in some of her writing. So again, I think that this is kind of, to me, handwriting analysis of this nature, well, it can be thought provoking. I think we should always consider it like highly speculative and kind of view it like astrology, right? Astrology can seem like it's, oh, you know, this fits, but it could also be wildly wrong. So just keep that in mind, like take this stuff with a grain of salt. Now, uh, the handwriting expert Tracy Tussle has said of Lucy Leppe's notes and writing, quote, on first impressions, you could be deceived into thinking she's just an ordinary girl. But once you dig deeper and start looking at the broader picture, the negatives quickly kicked in, putting an entirely different complexion on things. Initially, Leppe comes across as a little reserved, 
kind and caring, polite and loyal. She was capable of projecting gentleness and charm, but Letby's often reclining style of handwriting shows how she was withdrawn, particularly when stressed, generally on the defensive and potentially capable of irreverent actions. The reality was that she related to others superficially and selfishly maneuvered events for her own benefit. Now, I find it interesting that one could derive all of that from looking at somebody's handwriting, but, you know, I, again, I'm not the expert, so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, there's a fascinating, an, in my opinion, analysis on Lucy Lepi's notes. Um, I think this is the best one I've seen so far. Uh, and they, it mentions, uh, this is by Dr. Vandervaart. He's a, say, he's a psychiatrist and he has a YouTube channel. I've put his um, thing here and I will include a link to this in the video description um, so that you can, can go watch it. Uh, I think he's done the best analysis of her notes. He mentions hypergraphia. I don't necessarily see it. I could see similarities. I mean, if you look at hypergraphia, some of that looks very different, like, and a lot crazier than, like, Lucy's cramped and rambling writings, but I do find it interesting, and he also mentions BPD, which I found interesting as well, and how she may have gone into sort of, like, not a dissociative state when she's doing these things, but she could maybe, maybe she was subconsciously repressing like what she was doing and then kind of acting out and going into different modes to do that. I thought it was an interesting interesting analysis so I hope you guys check that out and my final thoughts on this are that if Lucy Leppy's guilty she may have left the notes to be found on purpose. She may have written them to be contradictory and rambling so that people would do exactly what people are doing, like analyzing them, looking at them, trying to figure out what does it mean. Um, and she could be just, you know, she could be trying to present as somebody who's experiencing intense fear and anxiety, but she may not be feeling those at all. She may have written those notes knowing that hey, I'm going to put them in the diary, I'm going to leave them there, and knowing that they were going to be found, it could be something like that. The notes themselves could be a manipulation. Like, why did she leave them there to be found? It, why not destroy them or get rid of them? I don't know. Seems a little bit weird, but it could be something like that. Um, uh, I don't believe handwriting analysis to be that compelling. As I said to you guys, I think it's sort of like astrology. I think it's interesting and I think it's nice to consider and stuff like that, but I always look at that with skepticism. Uh, I think the notes could be a manipulation and an attempt to assert control. If she is guilty and the notes are not a contrivance, like meaning they're not a manipulation and they're just genuinely like she was just kind of writing this stuff to kind of get out all of these intense feelings she's having, uh, then it offers a window into a distorted mind of a serial killer. If Letby is innocent... Uh, then I think the notes reflect the mind of somebody who's been pushed to their breaking point, crumbling under the weight of something that would be very severe false accusations and a relentless investigation. So those are my thoughts. Right now, I haven't just, you know, I'm not saying one way or another whether I think she is guilty or innocent. I'm saying there's mo lots of ways to look at it, but for just the notes, just the notes themselves, I do kind of, in the diary, I do kind of have the feeling that she wrote them with the intent of it being found and that it could be a contrivance, you know? Just saying. That's my thoughts. I'm interested to hear what you guys think about this. Um, anyways, that's it for now.